Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And today, our beautiful guests, yet again, are Lucia and Ricardo Luzondo. They are EWTN TV and radio hosts. They're also founders of the Family Renewal Ministries. And we had a wonderful yeah. conversation with them about their great witness and their testimony of walking away from everything, following Jesus, cost what it might. And they did it. Yeah. And they have no regrets. Mm -hmm. And it didn't always mean it was easy or it felt good. And I'm sure there were times in the midst of the storms they're like, did we hear him? Yeah. Right? But he says, walk away from everything. Don't look back. I got a plan for your life. And that's what <clears> they <throat> did. Well, we do need a whole nother show with them mm -hmm. today because they were unpacking so much uh, about the formats and what they do with people. And I, I need to clarify things with them, you know, because mm -hmm. I mean, they, they come, they do conferences, but they do more than conferences. I mean, they offer a whole format, a whole way for the parish to develop a marriage and family ministry that could slide over into the diocese, I think. Mm -hmm. And so we need to them, for them to unpack that more fully. So like you said, they're an amazing couple. Um, they're ones that have given up their lives. Those who lose their lives, find their lives. And those who find their lives lose their lives. So very successful. I'm sure they brought in good money as a doctor, as an attorney. And say, hey, we want to be missionaries. You worry about the family, what's going on, it seems to be collapsing. Here, mm -hmm. These two are a cause and a reason for joy. Yes. They are on fire. They are like meteors to share life, marriage, and family. And not only to share it, but to equip other people, to equip the domestic church, to equip the parish and dioceses all over the country and, and in the Spanish-speaking world mm -hmm. for the renewal of marriage and the family. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. You're not going to want to miss this show today. We'll be right back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guests, and I'm so excited to have them back, is Lucia and Ricardo Lozondo. They are EWTN TV and radio hosts. They're founders of Family Renewal Ministries. You could visit their website, ricardoilucia.com. It's Ricardo with a big Y, lucia.com, but it's ricardoilucia.com. I took three years of Spanish in yeah. high school, but <laughs> un poquito. That sounded really great. <laughs> really and for people to remember our names, so what was the name of that couple? Yeah. Ricky, Ricky and, and Lucy. Lucy. You there you go. Don't put the accent on everything. <laughs> that is so And perfect. I always have some explaining to do. Yeah. There you go. That is perfect. Well, I well babe, you, I know you yeah, wanted to yeah, ask I just, them that question. I wanted you to address kind of what I was bringing up at the start of the show um, because there's a tendency. Uh, for people just to hear y your conference speakers. Like you come and that, that's great if that's all that you were doing. I mean, you're doing so much with TV and with radio, but the different formats that you have, what I'm hearing, and you can correct me, you can come and do a conference to strengthen marriage in the family. To do that with English speaking people as well as Hispanic speaking people. But it sounds like you're offering formats and strategies and things that could be incorporated all throughout that parish or possibly in the diocese. Right? That's correct. So, so how does that work? How, how, do, how do people know when you come and what you're going to do? Does the priest have to sign off, say, this is what we want, not just a conference. All we want is a conference. Or no, we want to build this within our whole parish, or we want to do something with the diocese. How does that work? It could be parish, or it could be diocese, but it's, as you said, an entire strategy to change the culture of the parish to be a marriage building parish yeah. and a culture of encounter of, of diversity. 
in, in the parish. And it involves, because what is common with everybody, everybody is a member of a family, mm -hmm. every single person. Mm -hmm. As a single person, as a married, as seeking marriage, as a child of someone, someone is part of a family. And f marriage and family ministry affects everyone. And there may be different cultures, but the essence of marriage, the difference between male and female is all the same in every culture. So we utilize uh, different initiatives okay. strategically planned within the life of the parish to accomplish that transformation in culture where God's plan for marriage and family flourishes to the surface and when you strengthen the, the basic cell of society, which yeah. is the family. Mm -hmm. And the parish is exactly that, a family of families. Yeah. So when you focus at every age and stage of the family cycle, you know, from from kids being formed that will, f uh, in the future, have the vocation of marriage yeah. or priesthood, mm -hmm. because the family mm -hmm. is also the bed seat of uh, mm -hmm. vocations. Mm -hmm. We 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 touch on all of those areas and even stewardship, because <sighs> when you lift disciples, they take responsibility in time, talent, and treasure in the parish. So this initiative also promotes stewardship in every sense in the parish and to enliven, to set the church ablaze mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. God's planet through highly effective marriage so you and family all have, ministries. I mean, it sounds like the pastor really needs to be connected or yes. somebody who's representing him could Correct. say, you know, Father, and he, and if he's smart, he's going to say, I want this. I want this yeah. to be fully mm -hmm. integrated. I mean, we need this, that they see the importance of marriage in the family for the broader church, Correct. for the building of the community. Correct. And sometimes the lay ministries also, different kind of ministries call us to, to participate and help them. Yeah. Yeah. And we invite for marriage couples, but also those couples that have not married in the church mm -hmm. yet, also we, we address them to tell them the importance of having the sacramental union and how mm -hmm. to bless their lives. So we don't go specifically only for married couples in the church, those of, of course, but also we open to those people that need to go into the, the, the blessing of the marriage. Right. And one of the initiatives is Pathways to the Sacraments, mm -hmm. which we uh, partner with the Metropolitan Tribunal, the tribunal in the area mm -hmm. for formation to open the eyes of people. People think that it might be impossible or difficult to regularize their, their situation. So we, we show them in an extremely pastoral, non-judgmental yeah. way <clears throat> how to be fully integrated in the life of the church and be able to receive the Eucharist. Wow. It's transformational. Yeah, it is. And, and I, I, we dealt with a client, I mean, it was a couple of weeks ago, and they were living together. They were Spanish, living together six years, going to church, and the priest was trying to help them to get married, to get their marriage blessed and to come under the authority, all the blessings of the church. They loved each other, they wanted to be together, but sometimes it's a matter of asking exactly. and saying, what is this pathway? It's How do I get myself to the foot of the cross? Because I did it my way, was the wrong way, but I'm trying to do it the best that I can and to say there is a pathway for you to come. And we've had experiences of people being uh, cohabitating or being civilly married right. for 40 years. Right. And one of the ladies that went through the program pathways and finally yeah. got married it's in the beautiful. church says, now I can die in peace. There mm. you go. That is ministry mm -hmm. that touches the, right. the, uh, mm -hmm. the core and of the And the beautiful hearts. thing about that is coming from the laity. Mm -hmm. It's coming mm -hmm. from you, like you said, Ricardo, about people getting up there and telling their stories. So if someone can say, hey, I, this is how we did it. Maybe we didn't do it the right way. There is a right way, and there's a pathway for you to come. And you'd be surprised how many people are sure. out there going, I need to take that pathway. And there's so many different areas of marriage and mm -hmm. family ministry, so broad that there's something for everyone. So mm -hmm. we lift up the leadership. We ignite the leadership, give them the basic formation. And then the Lord tells them which particular ministry that they can engage in, mm -hmm. or they can go back having refueled their own family life to serve in, in the rest of their ministries together. And we have a funder that uh, you can apply uh, mm -hmm. for funding through this funder. And then all of these services are completely free to the parishes. Mm -hmm. Once you are a pilot parish, it's amazing. Well, it, well that's music to a rector's <laughs> ears. <laughs> it's right? it's all two full <laughs> years of funding and mm -hmm. then it, it either continues or uh, they've already been self-sufficient, mm -hmm. but two full years of funding to establish all of this. Mm -hmm. And that you're reaching both English and Spanish-speaking people is just yes. tremendous. Mm -hmm. So 
I believe you know the truth mm -hmm. on marriage, the family. I believe the Catholic Church has the truth. Correct. And yet we have some people in the midst of the congregation that are living together or whatever's happening and then you're, they hear the truth and get on fire and they come and do the right thing. What are the challenges? I mean, there's so many, there's a plethora of challenges to marriage, to the family. What ideologies are there? I think of St. Paul's words, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Don't fit into the schematic plan. That's what it means. Don't be conformed. And so what schematic plan or plans is the world or these ideologies trying to put the church in and you know, our different countries in and saying, no, you live in this form. Could you speak to that? Sure. And that is something that uh, Pope Francis would call ideological colonization. Like this comes with, these ideologies come to impose a false set of ideas that are antithetical to the gospel and to God's plan okay, exactly. and that deny even the existence of God. The three most key ones uh, that we are facing now in every culture, especially uh, in uh, cultural families that are minorities, are uh, gender ideology, uh, critical theories, particularly critical race theory and radical feminism, uh, which is, uh, with a new form of thinking, relatively new, called intersectionality. Mm -hmm. uh, radical uh, feminism says that marriage is oppression, that pregnancy, you know, having a child is an oppressive force. And if the woman is not separated from the reproductive function, she will never thrive in the world. That opens up the uh, ideal to, to hail abortion. And we could talk a hundred years about that, but uh, we want to focus elsewhere. A critical race theory focuses on the victimization of certain peoples. Uh, some are victims, some are oppressors, all by solely by the color of their skin, which is completely antithetical to the gospel. And it demonizes some people versus others. That is really corrosive to marriage and family life because the last generations of our children in college, in school, have been fed this toxic uh, venom and that is separating uh, parents and children. But the one that we're working most directly because most dramatically is antithetical to the gospel and antithetical and clashes directly with uh, Christian anthropology is uh, gender ideology, a gender theory, which is a false set of beliefs that say that there is no unity of mm -hmm. body and soul, which is the Christian anthropology. Mm -hmm. You know, I cannot say that I'm going to touch uh, the body of Ricardo. I say I'm touching Ricardo mm -hmm. because his body and his being and his soul is one unity that is inseparable. And that we are embodied beings and that biology is an embodied reality and yeah. we are made male and female. Mm -hmm. You know, the first chapter of Genesis clearly states that, that that's how God created us. And that is important yes. because sex, there's only two sexes. They're needed for reproduction, no, not only with uh, human, the human race, the human species, but every species. And it's a reality that we cannot depart from. But this ideology says that my biology, my body yeah. can be separated yeah. from who I really am. Yeah. And that I am, I'm self-defined and I am whatever I self-perceive myself mm -hmm. to be. So in this ideology, a man can be a woman, a woman can be a man. Mm. You can flow from one to the other, which is yeah. a fluid, ge uh, gender mm -hmm. fluid. I can be identified as none of them, which mm -hmm. is non-binary, mm -hmm. or as both at the same time. And it's quite perplexing. People think that this is not happening, but it's everywhere, yeah. including in colleges. It's immersed for years. This is decades in the making from the academy. Now the media, Hollywood, Big Pharma, uh, all, all and all the big corporations are sold to this because when you manipulate this, you have money and power. Mm -hmm. So, Ricardo, you are a physician. You are mm -hmm. a man of science. Mm -hmm. Is what she's saying, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Because, yep. because I think this is the crux of the matter with gender ideology. Our view is based on science as well as theology, yep. I think. So, so speak to that as a man of science and, and medicine, where that fits into 
ideology or sexuality or gender, you know. Yeah, and that's correct because this is something that uh, before science tried to face the faith to say, okay, well, faith is not fundamental, is not funded in, in science, and through the years we have proved that science relates with the religion in the aspect that God created us, men and women, and you can define as only two sexes, mm -hmm. and it's, in, it's in, in, encrypted in our cells. Now what is funny is that the same people are trying to say that science can be now ideological. I mean, you can use right. ideologies to justify science. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. So before they, they tried to avoid the faith because it was not scientific, and now that we proved it, now they are going, they are trying to say that science is going to serve ideologies, right. which is not true. And that's confusing people. That's confusing even more what is worse, our children. Mm -hmm. Our children think right now that, well, those ideologies are the truth, and they don't need to prove it scientifically. Yeah. And if you read a lot of articles from different magazines that are not really science, scientific ma magazines, trying to prove what is impossible to prove. Mm -hmm. We are men and women, and there's not other way to, to show right. it. And you cannot change sex. You can feminize a body, yeah. Yeah. or you can masculinize a body, mm -hmm. but you cannot change sex because it's at the cellular level. Right. Every cell of the body mm -hmm. says, yeah, I'm XX or XY, mm -hmm. I'm a female or a male. and. Uh, this entire idea that kids actually have a right, even mm -hmm. at the age of eight, mm -hmm. to self-define mm -hmm. and to enter the risk that I would like Ricardo to speak uh, about is that they push them not only into the conviction that there's someone else that they're not, but they push them to medical treatments first, mm -hmm. uh, medical transition. Uh, there's a social transition. Then they start <coughs> dressing mm -hmm. like the other sex mm -hmm. and everything. Then it's medical transition, which they start giving them opposite sex hormones, cross sex hormones, mm -hmm. to stop puberty or if they're opposed uh, puberty, to actually start getting the features of the other sex, the secondary features of the other sex. And then their ultimate goal, which is where the big money is, is to uh, mm -hmm. surgically do sex reassignment, mm -hmm. right. which is recreating, uh, you know, removing perfectly healthy breasts or mm -hmm. body, yeah. sexual mm -hmm. body parts to have the, that gender confusion, which mm -hmm. is called gender dysphoria, which has some, there's like less than 1% of the population had gender dysphoria, which is that conflict between my physical body mm -hmm. and, <coughs> and who I perceive myself to be. But now it's a social contagion. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids are doing it because it's become, you know, in style. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this is destroying families, mm -hmm. destroying families, because all of a sudden my little girl, you know, at age 13 shows up from nothing saying, I'm a boy mm -hmm. and we have so many witnesses from parents that we would like for them to refer to we, we're, we're associated with a person and identity project uh, they can see uh, the resources and uh, person and identity .com. Mm -hmm. and it's extremely good information far more detailed because yeah. this is very profound mm -hmm. topic where parents schools Catholic schools and parishes can arm themselves mm -hmm. with knowledge on how to counter this cultural phenomenon Mm. that is a pandemic as, as horrible as COVID. Ricardo, we just have two minutes left. You guys are like unbelievable because you just, <laughs> it's, it's so quick. So within two minutes, what's the hope? What are you offering? What does the church offer to combat all of this? How do we get on the offensive, the movement instead of defensive? Yeah, I think we need to start talking about it uh, because if you deny it, it doesn't disappear. Mm -hmm. So we invite your audience and your audience to talk to their pastors, to their leaders in the parish, let's talk about this. Because when we think, oh, well, we, we used to have 40 weddings a year, now we have mm -hmm. two. Well, what is the reason for that? Right. And we are having less and less, and people are not talking about marriage. And, and that's this continuation of the family, as we say in the previous program. I mean, it's, that society is going to be destroyed. So we invite your audience, and we want the people that are listening to be bold and to start talking about it and looking for the resources. I mean, this one that Lucia just gave is important, mm -hmm. uh, personalidentity.com. And then, well, you show they can contact us anytime, and then we can help to start a process of formation mm -hmm. in these aspects. Yeah. Informing the, the uh, diocesan staff, bishops to be mm -hmm. aware 
that this is happening because people know that it's out there but they're scared because they said i can be canceled i don't want to be rude and it's like they've developed an 11th commandment you know thou shall be nice and 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 to not offend people's feelings Mm -hmm. you speak lies to them and and the beauty of god is that it has to mercy but it has to come accompanied with truth because you cannot it's been proven that if we don't help the psychological aspects of 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 this situation then uh, there is no progress for those people Mm. ricardo lucia thank you so much you are a gift to the church and to the awakening that this entire Mm. world needs you can go to ricardo elucia.com r-i-c-a-r-d-o-y-l-u-c-i-a dot com we'll be right back plenty more to come don't go away Welcome back. Well, we're at home with Jim and Joy, and we wrapped up a rapid show yeah. with Lucia and Ricardo. Father, what did you think of them? I'm just blown away by them. I've always enjoyed uh, interacting with them and just listening to them. I think they could have uh, done a lot better just up here for the next um, four or five minutes, mm-hmm. just you know, expressing and articulating uh, what they were yeah. uh, talking about in so many areas in our world today concerning marriage. Uh, considering uh, the identity of the human person. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the encounter with Christ, I think, you know, when we, when we know who Christ is, then we <clears throat> begin to know who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think when we look at Christ and when we take his message seriously, and the message is a serious one, it's a challenging one, then we begin to see our lives in a whole different manner mm-hmm. and there's so many different marriage ministries I just you know want to maybe mention a few first of all theirs I encourage people to go to their website um, and to you know tap into what they have to offer uh, there's witness to love dot mm-hmm. org right uh, Ryan and Mary Rose Verrett mm-hmm. yeah. I'm actually involved with with their ministry uh, I did a something for their year of believing that yeah. they're going to start uh, I did like a I was almost an and almost an hour long talk. It was supposed mm-hmm. to be like 15 minutes. They told me, but I did an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. I can mm-hmm. hardly mm-hmm. Talk, hardly stop talking sometimes. Um, but uh, you know, j- just to emphasize that the, the church, you know, God is compassionate. I think that when it comes to dealing with people, you know, when, first of all, when when a parent loses a child, I think that's the the most you know heartbreaking thing a parent can go through, is to lose a child. Mm-hmm. I think second to that is having a child come to you and say, you know, mom and dad, I'm, I think I'm transgender I th- mm-hmm. or I think I'm gay mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's probably, you know, second to losing a child. That, that's pro- that weighs on, so they don't know what to do with that. Right. People don't know what to do. So there's, there's ministries out there. There's, there's areas that people can reach out to for help, Amen. that you're not alone. Um, so I wanted to encourage people that the, um, that there are many areas and and and, all, and also to be compassionate and to love, you know, your son or daughter, mm-hmm. you know, through that, through that, um, you know, yes. you know, kind of mix up in their identity and who they are. They need to know first of all that they're loved, yeah. you know, and love them and 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 maybe not accept, you know, yeah. the sin, but we need to love, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the person. Absolutely. You know, there's help. Yes. There's help out there. And most people, uh, and they've done lots of studies. Most people who have actually done a lot of those, um, you know, reassignments, right. the majority of people end up, you know, saying that it was the most tragic thing that mm-hmm. they did in their life. Mm-hmm. And, so, and there's, a high, there's a high rate of even suicide. Right among you know, people who have had mm-hmm. those procedures. Mm-hmm. So it, it proves something. It proves that, you know, actually going through with the you know, reassignment yeah. is not the right thing to do. Right. It's not. Father, close this with a blessing. 
Family, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may he turn his face to you and be merciful to you, and may he show you his kindness and give you his peace. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. May Thank EWTN you, and may the Lord himself come to every man and woman, boy and girl, marriage and family, and say what John Paul II would say to us so many times. Become who you are. Become who you are. And you'll have true happiness. Mm -hmm. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.